Good morning. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Pentecost. I think by now most of the folks here in, in our community know our prayers are with John and Beth and Brian as Pat Lecander entered the church triumphant last week. So I would invite you to keep the family in your thoughts and prayers for the next few weeks. Also, we'd like to welcome two singers. Susan and Vicki have come to sing with us this morning to make sure we're actually doing what we're supposed to be doing and we're glad to have them here. And also for those of you, again, locally who were worried about the dry conditions, I washed my car yesterday, which seemed to produce rain today. So you are welcome. Now we begin our worship today with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, we confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance. And, do, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. And also, and also with, you. with you. Christ is with you always and also with you I invite you to share that peace if you have others worshiping with you if not take out your phone and text peace be with you to someone in your address book who will need to receive that word of peace today let us pray Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, 
except that of knowing that we do your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Choir may be seated. We do welcome all of you who have gathered, gathered online to worship. For those who are new to St. Timothy, you are invited to explore what we understand our mission to be by visiting our website. There's been a little confusion. The website is St. Timothy, just S-T-T-I-M, St. Timothy Hendersonville.org. I urge our members to use our website to stay informed and connected. There will be a fellowship event next Sunday, the 28th, from 1 to 3 at Shelter Number 4 in Rockland Park. The outreach, outreach Committee is offering this as a safe way to fellowship with one another. See the weekly update for other details. We continue with the first reading. A reading from Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I, was, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary, weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around, denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. For they will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. The, their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach And shame has covered my face I have become a stranger to my own kindred And an alien to my mother's children Zeal for your house has eaten me all the scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. But as for me, this is my prayer to you at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. 
Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me, because of my enemies, deliver me. A reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if, we have, but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the 12, a disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave to be like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the rooftops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid, for you are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, 
and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, truer words have probably not been spoken. This is how Sundays and seasons began. These readings are introduced by these words. God does not promise that the path of the disciple will be easy. (laughs) Duh. Jeremiah feels the pain of rejection from those who do not want to hear what he has to say. Jesus declares that his words may bring stark division. Even so, even so, God's grace brings forth new creation, new opportunity. We are called to be witnesses to Christ in the world. Now, Jeremiah did not have a lot of friends. This may have been because Jeremiah was a bullfrog. We'll see how many people get that reference. Some will have to Google it and I'll wait. Perhaps he didn't have many friends because he proclaimed an unpopular message, a message entrusted to him, a message for which he was there, and a message which people did not want to hear. Jeremiah could have looked out at those people and told them, everything's just fine. Let the good times roll. There'll be a chicken in every pot and a car in every garage. Come to temple, say a few prayers, and all will be well. Except that that wasn't the message entrusted to Jeremiah. The message which Jeremiah was called to bring was that everything was not okay. And everything would not be okay for quite some time. Ultimately, ultimately, God would relent. Restoration will happen, but only following a prolonged period of privation. That message did not sit well with the faithful. In fact, the chief priest, Pasher, beat Jeremiah. Has Jeremiah placed in stocks? Why? Because the message, the message which Jeremiah is compelled to bring is not the message that Pasher wants to hear. So in short, he attacks The messenger, an unpopular message, doesn't win friends, but hopefully it may influence people. I get that. Your congregation council gets that. Nobody wants to be the bearer of bad tidings, nobody that I know anyway. Nobody wants to be the one who says, hey, We need to stay apart a little bit longer. It's a lot easier to close your eyes and click your heels together three times and say, there's nothing to worry about, there's nothing to worry about, there's nothing to worry about. Except that there is. And as much as we all want to get back to normal, bear in mind that normal is a setting on your washing machine. Normal, meaning life and worship and ministry like it was back in February, ain't going to return anytime soon, if ever. When we do get back together, our community experience, our worship life is going to be different. 
Communion will be different, but it will be present. Passing the peace will be different, but the peace will be passed. Our approach to music, when we finally get music incorporated back into corporate worship, is going to be different. Oh, and let me tell you, while most people will be nervous, one person in our midst is going to be so excited. This is going to be Sally Kaler's time to shine because one of the elements lifted up by the Synodical Resource Team is clapping. Yes, clapping, Lutherans using their bodies as instruments of praise and not simply our voices may make most of us a little uncomfortable. But there you have it, Lutherans clapping and dancing and swaying and maybe even using a tambourine. Woo, that's just crazy talk. We're not going to congregate at the door because it's not safe to bunch up. We will dismiss by section. But we're going to teach you how to do that. We're not going to be hanging out in the narthex eating donuts, which, believes me, pains me more than it probably pains you. But hanging out in the parking lot is okay. Even so, even so, worship will happen. God will be present and active. Community will be celebrated, albeit in different ways. The amazing thing about church history is that if you go back far enough, you can find examples of all kinds of patterns and forms and formats. Our history is rich and varied as communities have responded to changing environmental realities. And one thing that all those different communities have in common is that God is present and active in, with, and under. The community as the community gathers. Because it is God who gathers and brings the community together and not the other way around. We like to think we're really important. Well, we've got to light the candles or God doesn't know to show up. No, God shows up. God shows up because that's what God does. God brings us together. We don't bring God into the action. So whether we worship corporately, physically, or digitally, or virtually, we worship as a community gathered by God, and God's people rejoice in the presence and the activity of God. We have been and will continue to worship via live stream. But having said that, think about the wealth that we've been able to experience over the last few weeks. Compline, Compline, every Tuesday night, service of the word for healing, Thursday mornings, service of the word, Sunday morning. The community continues to be engaged in prayer and worship at a heightened level. The community continues to grow food in the garden. We continue to check in with and check on one another. The community continues to engage in outreach as we are able in the midst of pandemic. Even so, even so, what we want has to take a secondary role to what's required. New patterns, new forms, new ideas about how to be engaged in mission and ministry in the months ahead, it's going to look different than it did way back in February. But our attention isn't focused on moving back. Our attention is about building for the future. What can we build moving forward? What will it look like? Whom can we touch, right? Where will our resources be best deployed to advance the kingdom of God in a new and a different experience? Therein, brothers and sisters, lies the connection to our gospel for today. There will be, (laughs) just figure, there will be disagreements and dissensions and differences of opinion 
And that's okay. Because our focus is not about being right or about winning. Our focus is on making Christ known as we are best able to make Christ known. And as long as our focus is on reaching into a hurting world with a grace-filled and a gracious welcome, think of the lives that will be touched, reclaimed, restored. Think of the people who may hear for the first time that they are beloved of God in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of fear, in the midst of uncertainty. There's a community reaching out to say you are loved and you are special to God. Even so, even so, it may mean that some sacred cows are put out to pasture. It may mean that new crosses are shouldered as we follow, receive that word, follow, follow the teacher, follow the master. Not telling the teacher and informing the master what we will and will not do, but faithfully following where Christ is leading into a new world of mission and ministry. Even so, even so, if we can learn to clap, we can learn to do this because this is stewardship. This is giving with joy and thanksgiving what has been entrusted to us. This is looking at the reality of the world around us today and asking how we can effectively be about mission and ministry. It may and probably will look different. It may make us uncomfortable. But I can assure you that each step of the way, we do not walk alone. Let us pray. Even so, Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending. By paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown, give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
let us confess this gift of faith we share using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. going to give Pastor Gross another week off from <laughs> doing the offering talk. Um, I was considering how we talk about giving of time, talent, and treasure, and I think it's not an accident that the order that it's in. Um, so as we consider where, how, and where we'll use our talents and how we will give of treasure, the first thing is needed is giving our time um, so I say this as much for myself as for you it would be helpful to dedicate um, and devote time to prayer and meditation in other words mindfulness um, it'll help put the news of the day in context we maybe take a break from social media and news channels and online news for certain periods of time and devote that to prayer and meditation and consider, I'll tag along with Pastor's sermon, maybe our resources go to new places. Um, God will put on our hearts what we should do with the talents He's given us and the treasures that He's first given to us. So, that is my word for today. Time. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gentle Lord, we ask for your constant reminders to do our part to stay safe and not spread the COVID-19 virus. Bless all researchers working on a vaccine. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord, give strength to your people, especially those who face the aftermath of natural disasters. We pray for those affected by hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, and storms. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Dear God, send your angels to minister to us and help us overcome temptations. Hear us, O oh God. 
Your mercy is great. Living God, motivate us, equip us, and enable us to care for your creation as you care for us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds in their habitats. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend others across the world. Revive and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, we lift up to your care those who are in need of comfort and healing, especially John, Beth, Brian, and all the Lacander family at the death of Pat. We lift up also Kay Abernathy, Buddy Bender, David Edsel, Cheryl Escobar, Chris Heimer, Meredith House, Judith Hughes, Ed Kaler, Ruffy Longry, Anthony Marino, Bill Nelson, Tom Nelson, J.T. Owens, Mark Pisoni, Lori Rustkowski, Sandy Schisler, Karen C., Kathy Smith, Linda Yonke, Jen Yaman, and others we name now. Martha. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, forgive us when we grow weary and turn our backs on your beloved children who continue to suffer in any way, whether in, in our county or halfway across, around the world. Remind us always to recognize the face of Christ in the face of these. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Almighty God, help us to search our hearts to recognize when we play a part in broken systems. And then give us strength to speak and act on behalf of those who have long suffered brutality and injustice. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As the body of Christ, all are invited at this time to present other petitions. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, especially Pat, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those prayers too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Neither death nor life, 
nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation is able to separate us from the love of God present in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.